Hey folks, good afternoon again. Today is the next update for the Super Tunia window boxes. Today's date is June 4th, 2023. First video in June. Uh, so the last week has been nice because we finally actually got to see some temperatures in the 80s. Yesterday was in the high 80s, but still a cooler year than I can remember here in North Carolina. Um, there's a little overcast today. Hasn't been much direct sunlight. This is about as bright as it's going to get. Uh, but still, as you can see, the growth is still happening. I haven't touched this box. Um, you can see one side is higher than the other because that side over time, just from gravity and the weight of the stems, actually just fell forward. It did it on its own. This side has not fallen forward yet, so it's still going up the window. The box itself is officially covered up with growth in the first week of June, so that's pretty good. And I think the rest of them, as you see here shortly, are. As you notice, what's nice about this now is the black cherry is starting to really come through. And now you got a whole cluster of different colors, which is, as you can see, really nice. Again, I'm really impressed with the blue skies. As you can see, you have a mixture of some that are like a, uh, like a light purple and then some that are a light blue. Um, it depends on how old the flower is. That's what I've noticed uh, as they get uh, as they get closer to dying, they turn this light color, but when they're brand new and they just unfolded, they're this light, more purple color. They're the only ones that really do that because the, the cherries stay that same color along with the bubble gum. So here you can see from the side what it's looking like here. And it's pretty similar to last year because if you watch last year's videos, for the 2022 season this entire box is only bubble gum and it was a monster as you can see it's getting close to these box hedges to give you an idea um pretty soon here gonna have to <laughs> start making a choice either cut these hedges lower or start cutting the super tunias back which i haven't had to do yet Coming over to this side, I'll let you see up here where it's pretty much fallen down. That's why a lot of this is just a lot of green, not a lot of flowers yet, but they will flower up. And then over here, as you can see, still waiting it for it to do its thing. And again, this year I decided to just let nature take its course and see what happens. So, meaning meaning I'm not going to be touching it, trying to rearrange it. The only thing I'll do is I'll have to trim some areas back. But last year I was opening up the windows, pushing everything forward, because I, I was watering through the bedrooms. I was coming in through the house, pouring water into the back of the box, and it was really messy. I like this view here, the blue skies and the bubble gum. The blue skies, again, my so far my favorite. This is my third year in a row with Super Tunias. And I've done bubblegum every year. But this is the first time I've actually done different colors in the same box. Now, coming over to the railings. Again, looking really nice. The boxes are pretty much covered, except as you can see, the black cherry there, not yet spilling over all the way on that side and that's the first thing I've learned about these black cherry is it's funny how it works because when I bought them from the greenhouse the nursery they had the least amount of flowers on them when they were still in the little planters compared to the bubble gums and the blue skies and it's funny how that has equated out now to the black cherries even though they look great they just grow the slowest, so they can't keep up with everything else. I guess it's different if you put one in the middle there, you don't notice as much, but when you put one on the end, you see it doesn't keep up with everything else. 
But I'm sure in another week it'll be there anyway, so it's fine. Over here again, looking nice. Really dense right here on this side. I did, uh, a couple days ago, trim the back of them. Reason being is they were pouring over everywhere here. And I figured, what's the point? We can't see them. They're not getting any sunlight. It's a waste of energy for the plant. So I trimmed them all back. And what's nice is now I can see in the box better. You can see there's one of the drippers right there. And it's still great because the way I built it up, you don't really have any foliage touching the, the soil and causing any mold. And then what's nice about it is if I need to, I can come in here and spray some fungicide or some insecticide, whatever I need. And, or come out here and, you know, peel off some old leaves. Obviously is easy because I can stand up behind it because it's on the porch. Total a different story when it's with the window boxes. So again, here you can see nice and open so you can get airflow through there, which means there's a less chance of, of moisture building up and not drying out, causing mold. So that's very important because last year, if you watched last year's videos, especially if you watched the videos I filmed last year around the month of August, these, uh, well, even after 4th of July, because last year I trimmed them after 4th of July, they were just decimated with mold. It was terrible. Black mold or gray mold is what they call it. So coming over here to the garage. Again, same thing. I'm not touching anything. So as you could see, they are successfully growing up the windows, which I've never really seen them before because like that because last year i would just simply go in get on the ladder because that's the garage go up there open up the window and just push everything forward which it, it made an instant difference you'd have a lot more flowers all of a sudden looking at you but i think it actually contributed to the plant struggling with the mold because you're taking all those flowers you're pushing them forward kind of sandwiching them on top of the other flowers. They die off, they get moldy, and that's that's how it goes. Um, other than that over here, I noticed that there's a family of birds that made a nest over here. And again, you could see this bubble gum has these white flowers mixed in with it on the same plant. One of the viewers commented that it's probably a different type of super tunia that got mixed in silverberry i'm not sure i mean i i if you watch last year's videos this box had silverberry in it they don't look quite the same so i'm not sure what it is again it's really wild to see how far up the window it goes uh, let's see if we can get back here here's the black cherry which still hasn't grown over the side Again, no big deal, it will. Then, blue skies, which again, no matter where they are, what box, they just look fantastic. Just, they have the densest cluster by far of flowers. Bubble gums, again, they flower profusely, but there's a lot of green. The bubble gum, the, the leaves on the bubble gums are much bigger, uh, to give you an idea. So here's, Here's uh, some leaves on a bubble gum, All right? You see that? And then I'll show you a blue skies. And the blue skies look like this. Totally different leaf shapes and sizes. But what's nice about it is when you have smaller green leaves, it doesn't, it doesn't take up too much of the color of the flowers. And so I think that's why the clusters look so nice like this. So, still been fertilizing. 
every single watering. Yesterday is the first time I've watered for an hour. So I turned the drip system on 30 minutes in the morning and then I waited till the sunset about 7, 7.30, did another 30 minutes. And I just cranked up the fertilizer dosage. So now what's going on is I had it set on, on the fertilizer uh, injector to the lowest setting. Um, and now I've cranked it up to the next highest setting. And there's like, there's like another two more to go or three more to go. Uh, I figure right now it's still not getting hot out enough, even though it's in the first week of June. You know, we're nowhere, nowhere near getting into the 90s yet, uh, which is different from last year. Last year, we were already well into the 90s by June. Um, when it gets towards the end of June, I'm going to crank up the fertilizer even more by simply toggling the switch, which I'll show you right now on the fertilizer injector I have right here. All right, so here's the injector. It's off right now. And you're gonna see here, there's a couple of settings. Let me focus it. So you have it on slow, which if I turn this to the left, that's where I've had it the last month. And I have not had to open this up at all to put any new fertilizer in. And the way that you can tell you still have fertilizer in the system is if you look at this line right here, you see how it's dark? That's still showing you that there's fertilizer still coming out of here. It's been about a month since I opened this up. So it's been on the slowest setting. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank it up to a one. And we will see how that goes. It's gonna use fertilizer a little faster, but that's fine. They seem to these plants right now seem to love it. And you know what? I'm gonna go down to the street. I used to do this last year, right around now, because it's starting to look really nice. So I'm gonna go across the street and we'll see how it looks from a different vantage point. And again, there's no direct sunlight on it. I mean, there's some clouds. but they still, they're looking nice. Better than last year, that's for sure. Uh, as you can see from the street, the first thing you can notice is the black cherries that don't cover the box up all the way. So you have right there, and then you have right there. Other than that, all the boxes are totally covered because the black cherries kind of just fell in the middle. Um, and again, this is how they look right now. It's about 5.15 in the afternoon. So the sun is already starting to come down here. And again, this house is facing west. So if it was facing south, which is that direction, there'd still be a lot more sunlight hitting it. But there's also some trees here that would block that out. Uh, and again, if you look on the, the website for Proven Winners, which makes the Super Tunias, they tell you that these, these, these plants want as much sunlight as humanly possible. Well, I mean, unfortunately, I can't take the house and rotate it towards south. So right now, with the west facing, with the, with the house facing west, these flowers get about direct sunlight from maybe 1.45 in the afternoon until about 6, 6.30. So I'm only getting about four and a half uh, hours, maybe during the longest days of the year, like towards the end of June, maybe a little more sunlight, maybe close to five, but that's only, that's not many days out of the year. If this house was facing south, they'd be getting eight or nine hours of direct sunlight. But it goes to show you that do not be off put if you can't give them six plus hours of sunlight. These, these, these plants this year and last year, they never got more than six hours of sunlight in a day and, and they never will. And even then, look at what is capable with just four hours of sunlight a day 
and the temperatures have only been between the 60s and the high 70s since I planted them uh, in, on April 15th, with some of the nights dropping down into the low 50s. And this is what they look like. I even think a couple of those nights got into the high 40s back in April. And this is still what is capable with the super tunias, given those circumstances. And keep in mind, they're not all the vistas. The super tunia vistas are the bubble gums. But the blue skies and the black cherry are just the normal super tunias, which are still way better than a normal petunia. But even then, this, if this house was facing south, it'd be even more crazier, which, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how much, you know, water that would take if you're getting, you know, eight, eight or nine hours of sunlight a day, especially here in North Carolina, where you can get into late July and you're getting 95 degrees every single day with tons of humidity. Um, lots of watering it's going to take. But anyway... Hope you uh, tune in next week and keep tuning in. Follow along, subscribe if you like this. Leave some comments, tell me what else you'd like to see. And until then, see you next time.